So I'm about to go outside to do a day of planting with Matt and Corey. Corey's here today, so we're gonna have some extra help, which is wonderful. But this is, I wanna share with something with you that I've never tried. A lot of you uh, here on here and also on Blind Pig and the Acorn have told me over the years that I should do this, but I never have managed to do it until this year. And that is to soak my okra seeds before I plant them. So you can see we've got them soaking. We've been soaking overnight. I'm gonna do a few of granddaddies. I really like that one. That's just a green, um, kind of a smoother, the outside of the okra is smoother than some of the rigid kind of ones, kind of a smooth feeling. So I like that one good. I've never tried Alabama Red, so I'm gonna do three of those and try them. I tried Silver Queen last year. Katie got me this seed for Christmas like two years ago but they never come up. So I'm gonna try them again. I've got three of them. And then the rest of them are the Jing Orange. That's really my favorite okra to grow. I love the taste. I love the um, that it can get fairly large and not be hard and woody like some okra can do, you know, if you get it, if it gets too long. When Granny was able, she would, uh, when I was working during the day, so I wasn't here, she would often, as she went out in her garden to cut her okra, she would come up here and check mine. <laughs> and if I'd let it get too long, she'd let me tell, tell me about it and tell me I was gonna let it go to waste. It's getting too long. And sometimes she would even cut it for me and leave it sitting on the porch. So Matt and I are gonna work on planting this part of the garden today. Our plan is to do some okra, the okra I just showed you that I've been soaking, then also some squash and zucchini on either end and kind of put the okra in the middle. We like to grow our squash and zucchini in mounds. So we mound up some dirt. That's what Matt's doing right now. He's added some compost. And as far as the varieties we like to grow for they're just our regular eating squash is what I would call it, not the winter squash, but I guess summer squash is the name. We like to do Black Beauty. That's just a zucchini, a really common one you've probably heard of. I like yellow squash and I like the early, uh, I mean the straight neck and the crook neck. So I usually do some of each of those. And then this year I'm gonna try Larry Griffith, a Blind Pig and the Acorn Reader sent me some, I think it's Cocozelle, C-O-C-O-Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. It's a zucchini that's kind of looks striped. It's got stripes in it. You've probably heard of it, so I'm going to try it this year. So we got the squash and zucchini planted. We got one long row of okra planted. I did not soak enough seed. So now we've got half of a row of the ones I soaked and the other half, I don't know what I was thinking last night. I just didn't soak enough, but that's how we usually grow it. So I feel like it'll be okay. And this will give us a real good comparison between the soaked, the ones that we soaked and the ones that we didn't. I'll get to see firsthand which ones uh, sprout first and which ones do the best. The other long row that we did right behind, we were gonna do two long rows of okra, but then we decided at the last minute to change our plans. And the other row we did, we planted a row, a long row of peanut beans. Peanut beans are really popular here. It's a green bean, uh, like, like other green beans that you string before you eat, but it's a bush type. It doesn't have to be trellis. So it's just a bush type bean that's really popular in this area of Appalachia where we live. We have this little trellis over there in the sunshine where you can see Matt where he's working. He's adding some compost and we're going to put some peas there. I've never really grown peas except like the early sugar snap peas. I'll usually grow some of those, but that's about it. But last year and the year before, I really become interested in growing peas. So my friend Jim Casta shared Crowder peas with me and I grew those and we really liked them and I liked them um, mostly, we didn't really eat them fresh as much as dried. I saved them and dried them and then we would soak them just like you would uh, soup beans, pinto beans and any dried bean and then cooked them that way and we really liked those. But this year I'm gonna try, I'm trying two different ones, actually three different ones. One of them is a bush bean so I'm or a bush pea so I'm gonna put it, I have to find a place to put it. But these two that we're gonna put in these beds, uh, this bed is Wando and Little Marvel. So if you've grew those before, you'll have to have to leave a comment and tell me which one was your favorite or which one did the best for you. 
And the other one, the bush one, that I'm going to have to find a place to, to grow is Mississippi Pink Eye. So I'm going to try that one. Again, if you've grew that one before, please leave a comment and tell me um, what you thought about it, if it was one that you really enjoyed. And it's funny, I was already interested in growing the peas because of uh, Jim Cassida sharing some with me. But then last year we were playing at a church over in Suchess, Georgia, and it was a... Um, I can't remember if it was their decorate. I don't really think it was decoration day. I can't remember what. It was a special day, and I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly why, but they had dinner on the grounds afterwards. And so there was the best dish of peas. It was kind of butter beans, what we would call butter beans. Some people call lima beans, and then very, maybe two different varieties of peas mixed together. Cooked very simply, just really boiled together, not even no meat in it. Uh, I actually found out who cooked them, because I enjoyed them so much, and asked her, and she said she used canola oil. It was a, a nice little old lady. Uh, told me that her husband always enjoyed them. He's passed away, but she just continued to bring them to church because she had done that for so long. And so before we left, she went and got a Cool Whip bowl, empty, you know, empty, just one that had, they had saved and filled it full and sent it home with me. And between me and Granny and Matt, we eat all of those. They were just so good. So that's, that's part of what, it was just simple. There was no trick to it or anything. She just cooked them together with a little oil. That was basically it. So I guess I've been dreaming about those is one reason I'm really hoping that my peas do good this year. Popsicle. I'll take one. Oh. Can I have that one? Yeah. That'll be you, Jay, smart. No. Yeah, okay, whichever one you want, I'll take the other. I'll try this one, I guess. Think you want this one, take this no, one? No, I want this one. See, Corey, how that valerian, how the leaf looks different. Yeah, you're right. It's way different. What's that stuff back there? Oregano. Oregano. The big bush? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Have we ever tried to do anything with valerian? No, because Molly's too scared. Darn, it smells good. I like valerian. It's effective, but it gives me nightmares. So if I take it, I'll sleep, but then I have nightmares. It's very strong, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's other sedatives. I don't know if Skullcap will grow here or not. I have a Skullcap tincture that I made one time and I gave Katie and didn't tell her. <laughs> I put some of my tea too, but I didn't tell her because I knew she wouldn't take it if I did. The Fever View mm -hmm. is not a sedative, it's a pain reliever. I don't know if you could purely classified as a pain reliever, but it, but it's not a sedative. It's for headaches. It's supposed to help with headaches. But I want to say that it might be classified as one. And then there's something else. Is it white bark or white something? Willow bark. Willow bark maybe is what I'm thinking of. That is classified as a pain reliever. Um, yeah. That's the aspirin. Mm -hmm. And I got that book, you know, that I showed y'all or told you about the it's 106 wild plants of the southeast, so it's ones that should just be growing wild that you don't even have to plant. <clears throat> Let's see. And it tells you how to harvest, when to harvest, what it is, what it's good for, how to use it. The persimmons leaved out good this year. Mm -hmm. It didn't do it last <coughs> year, did it? What? Persimmon tree over. Mm. Yeah, it's got the root. It must be gonna make it. It's got them, it's got persimmons up big around on it when it has them on it. Yeah, big ones. It's like an Asian persimmon. Which tree y'all talking about? Yeah, it's finally one right over there. That one? How about that for her? Remember those persimmons Jim Casta sent me that time, those real big ones? That's what it is, same mm. kind of tree. Isn't there a persimmon tree? At the behind y'all's trailer down there for hunting. 
It's just a regular Wild percent, one. but there, oh. there's 20 or 30 of them around there close. We paid percentage off of it one time, I remember that. Yeah, I shook it. And they all hit the ground. We picked them up and I brought them home. She made a pie out of them. I think the, I mean, those are good, but I think the Asian ones are better. They don't have as much of that ash, what do you call that ash, how do you say that? That makes your mouth look funny yeah. after you eat them? Astringent. Oh, astringent? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? That yeah, makes your mouth look funny? You, yeah, they don't have that. Almost like the way spinach does. Even the works. ripe wild persimmons sometimes still have that, even though they've been frosted on them all out. So you don't think we're going to take Taylor down there? No. You want to tackle the winter squash, see what we can do about ours first before we go? Yeah, I'm going to do whatever. I'm the mule. You just point me where you want me. Us. It's me. <laughs> Ernest T. Ernest T. Uh, or Corey. No, I was going to say Corey P, but I can say Corey G. Yeah. That still not, rhymes. You're not Corey P no more. No. I'm Corey PG. CPG. CPG. Austin's are technically C A G. Tag. Yeah. Yeah. So we have finished a long day of gardening and we are wore out, plum wore out. I am anyway. Are y'all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting there. I think Matt was wore out when we started. He had a hard week this I week at work. I feel like a borrowed mule. You usually feel like a borrowed mule though, don't you? Mm -hmm. But what a sense of accomplishment. We've been working on our garden for, what, two weeks? Mm -hmm. And we finally kind of got it. Well, there'll be a few more things we plant, but mostly it's took care of. Everything has been planted. And then today, after we worked at home, we come down and planted Granny's garden. Hers is much, much smaller than ours, so it didn't take very long. And she basically just has beans, some tomatoes, uh, two hills of cucumbers, some peppers, and some onions that we planted, you know, two months ago, a month ago, two months ago, I guess. And that's about all. And her, her soil is not near as rich as ours is. So if you noticed that we were using bagged uh, potting soil, that's why. Sometimes that's a way you can cheat. Now there's all kinds of little techniques you can search for where you just open the bag and actually grow in the bag. Well, what we did was Matt dug out for the tomatoes and then we filled the hole with potting soil. Sometimes we use mushroom compost, but to be honest with you, we were so tired today, we didn't want to carry no comp. We had to, to get carry the compost, we'd have to load it and then bring it. To carry the bags, we just had to pick up the bags and bring them, so that was, that was much easier. I did want to share one tip with you. It was so hot today, uh, and especially when the sun was really shining in the middle of the day and we were working in the bright sunshine because that's just how it turned out. We usually try to kind of follow the shade around the house, but that, that kind of didn't work for us today. But is Matt's trick of a bandana. How did you learn about this? Uh, I don't know. 
Yeah. I learned about it years ago. Yeah, so you've seen, um, there's like things you can buy that's cooling cloths or mm -hmm. something, is that what they're called? And I've bought yep. some for Matt before and he's, he's used them at work and they work well. But also just a bandana does, so he wets it in cold water and then puts it on his neck and then when he's out on the job working, or today he was letting me use it, then every once in a while you just take it off and how, how long do you do that, Matt? Seconds. Flip it for a, around in the air for a few seconds and then put it back on your neck without re-wetting it. You don't have to re-wet it again. And it's it's cold again. It feels cold and cool again. When you're just introducing oxygen to it and it cools the, the damp cloth uh, just almost immediately, and then you put it back on, it's just like you just re-wet it. Mm, and it feels so good. And you can do that periodically several times until it begins to dry out and then you just re-wet it and start over. Start over again. So during the summer months, pretty much every day, Matt takes, a, there's a bandana with him when he goes to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. Multiple ones. Multiple ones and then he uses them and then of course they're easy to wash and dry and start over again the next day. So we hope that you enjoyed seeing us garden today, kind of coming along with us. We're going to try our best to see if we can walk home. <laughs> We're all so tired. We may have to spend the night in Granny's yard. Will someone carry me? <laughs> I'm just a kid. Yeah, you, you can't get away with that anymore. I think you should carry me and your daddy. Hop on, I'll try. Yeah. Get the wheelbarrow and I'll push you. Yeah. <laughs> but we hope that you'll drop back by often and help us celebrate Appalachia. Storm your camera. <laughs> Anything. Mama, that was great. You did great. Steal your daddy's bandana. We're going to use both of my phones. So on one of them, I'm calling him pizza, and the other one, I'm calling the police on one of you guys, but you have to guess who. A pizza would be nice. <laughs> but I'm too tired to go get it. Do you like I'm me? sure too tired to make it. No, we're going to eat what we got. I'll go get a pizza. There was no. something I wanted at Walmart anyway. No, 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 no. We're going to eat what we got. We got steak. Yeah. That's better than a pizza, right? Yeah. What time is it? We could do a baked potato? 4.22, yeah. Steak and a potato and a salad. And we still have that stuff left from lunch, Oh, too. yeah, we could eat that Anybody with it. Want. We could just eat that and a steak. That would be right, and we wouldn't have to do a potato. Right. And a salad. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I even have something good for our, uh, dessert, Dad. Mayfield ice cream. I meant to make a cake, but the cake didn't get made, but you can still have ice cream. Give me the ice creams or give me death. All right, Corey, help me up. Maybe I'll get some water first. Give me the ice cream. Ice cream, I we all stream for ice cream. Thanks, Dad. Do we still have stuff to make a salad with though if I want some?